You know what? I bet you've never thought I would ever do a video like this. Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? Okay, so today is uh, the release of iOS 14 Public Beta 2, I believe. And I'm actually going to jump on the hype train today and get it installed on my iPhone 11 Pro, as you can see right here. Now, the reason why I want to get into iOS 14 Beta and make a video on it is because I'm going to be reacting to some of the features that are being introduced here, which I think a lot of us Android users, or rather just people who prefer to use Android on the daily, it's things that we have been using for quite a while now. I'm not going to go as far as to say that Apple is copying Android or anything like that. I already do know a little bit about what these new features are, and I think that Apple's putting their little spin on everything. See, widgets are a big thing in iOS 14, but to be honest, I don't really use widgets in my Android devices. I prefer to have just folders in the dock that have all of my most used applications, and then I just keep everything really clean. And I know a lot of people out there might bring up the app drawer and everything is usually in alphabetical order and it still takes them a while to get to the app that they want. But at the very least, because it's in alphabetical order, you know exactly where to go. Contrast that to what I have on my iPhone 11 Pro right now, and I'm gonna go ahead and just get right into it. So officially into my iOS here, and you can already see that I have all of the folders on the bottom. It's typically what I end up doing. So I have things like uh, messaging applications in one folder, then I have the utilities, uh, browsing and then media or photography in this case because I was using this phone a lot for photos and videos. Now, <laughs> if you take a look at the other home screens, this is something I've never really gotten used to in iOS. All of the applications that I install are constantly populating the rest of my home screens. Uh, and I'm so lazy that I don't create the folders for these various apps. They just all sit on the side and kind of intrinsically, I just remember where they are the first few times I use them and just remember to go straight back to that area so that I can find the app that I want. Not really the most ideal situation, I understand. You can already see that I have a bunch of applications here that I just don't use or haven't used in a long, long time, uh, which means that, well, they just clutter things up. I even have a few games here and one fun one that was up here, the CES 2020 app. I still have it installed from CES, which was way back in January. So unless you really don't like iOS or you've been living under some sort of rock, uh, you know that one of the main features when it comes to iOS 14 in this public beta is icon management and of course, home screen widgets. We'll start off with the home screen widgets. Let's just go over to the side and we already have all of these widgets here in the today view. Uh, now on an Android device, this would typically be like the Google Now area. You get some bits of news and whatnot, but here, uh, just as a quick look at our many different widgets that we can have, we have a calendar, a quick notes thing here, battery widget, but we also have other widgets down here, I have this focusing app called Tide, uh, which allows me to do things like the Pomodoro technique and whatnot pretty easily. That is already populated as a widget here on the bottom. On any of these widgets, a rather short press will get us to a small contextual menu that allows us to either edit the widget or edit our home screens. Let's go ahead and get into what they call the jiggle mode. <laughs> Let's get some jiggles going and start messing around with the home screens. Everything starts to jiggle, obviously, just like on the regular home screens. We have all of my icons ready for rearrangement. And again, this is the part that I'm just so lazy to actually do. So let's hold one and start moving it around. There you go, we have it on the home screens. Uh, so this is already a big improvement that you can have extra bits of information on your main home screens. Uh, that way you can have it there at the ready and it just makes things look a little bit more useful than just having all of these icons here that, well, let's say 60 to 80% of them, I'm not even hitting. One thing that I notice already is that we can't put it down here. It's always going to adhere to the grid and start off from the top left going down. So that's a little bit disconcerting. Uh, I wish that I was able to put it down here, maybe just create a little bit of a design, but it looks like they're going to adhere to their own grids and their tiles. Why don't we go ahead and move over a calendar app? Now, to be fair, I usually have a Google Calendar and I don't have it set up here, so it's not gonna show that I have any events today, but just for the sake of showing this off, uh, the other thing we can do is go ahead and stack them on top of each other, and you'll see that these two dots come up right here, and if I hit done, I can actually scroll between all of the different widgets that I have stacked on one another. I like the widget stacking feature. That is really nice, but it also means that perhaps in iOS, uh, uh, developers rather are going to have to create their widgets to adhere to a certain design language, which is not a bad thing per se, uh, but it might be a little bit limiting as far as which widgets you can actually do this with. For example, if I take this widget and move it over, 
and try to stack it on top, it's not really going to work because these are two completely different sized widgets. At least that's what I'm thinking here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the jiggle mode real quick so we can look at other places where widgets might populate. Tap and hold, get into the jiggles, and then hit that plus button. We already have a menu for widgets. You can search for the different widgets you might have. Uh, and if you look at all the different widgets that are available so far in this listing, obviously they are going to be mostly Apple apps. That will change later on as developers continue to create widgets for this system. One thing I really like is that the photos is up here. I already have a really awesome photo uh, that might end up sort of slide showing or just showing me one particular picture from time to time. Shouts out to Isa and Hayato in this photo. So let's go ahead and touch and hold on here and move it onto the home screens. Uh, so it would work not just on the home screens, but also in the today view. So I kind of like it there, but let's see what it'll say when I actually tap on it. Just goes right into, oh, of course my iCloud is full. It goes right into the particular area that is collecting the last winter photos. One thing I find interesting is that the name of the widget is constantly underneath it, just like with any folder or icon. I think if you're taking up more space on the home screens with these widgets, it might be nice to turn that off just to give it a bit of a cleaner look. Uh, maybe that's going to be a feature that comes up a bit later. Let's go ahead and look at a couple of other widgets. I'm looking at the news widget right now, and there are a number of different sizes. I think I would go for the shorter but wider one. Uh, I like that uh, the grid kind of makes it look pretty nice rather than taking up an entire screen almost with this one. So let's go Go ahead and add this widget. So if I hit this one and I hit add widget, brings it right up to the top. But of course, since it's the same size as this one, it will smart stack it. So let's say I want to just look at some more peaceful times and then I want to get kind of mad about the news. So yet another example of the smart stacking. I think the smart stacking is probably my favorite portion of this. Uh, it's a nice way of putting together your widgets so that they're not cluttering everything because I think at some point you could get a little bit too far or rather you could get carried away with just how many things you have on your home screens. Just like we used to with all of the icons for every single application that you, uh, that you installed. Okay, so let's get into the next portion of iOS 14 that is very interesting, and that's icon management. This is something that I need a, a ton, because as you can see here, I have two screens over a folder that I did make for all of my lifestyle slash uh, health applications under a folder called Habits, but it's way over here, and I just was so lazy to bring it to my main screens. That is obviously pretty uh, pretty annoying, and it's something that I, uh, there's something that I admit to. I'm a very lazy iOS user. But instead of going all the way to the left in the today view, we could go all the way to the right and it brings up the app library. This feature is very interesting to me because it is iOS trying to tell you, or rather it's trying to figure out what applications work in what categories. There are a couple of them that are fairly obvious, like for example, in the other category, we have the feedback assistant, which is where I could give feedback on iOS 14. Maybe I'll just link them to this video. These are the ones that I find kind of interesting already. I have a bunch of games here, whoops. I have a bunch of games here like Gwent and Call of Duty Mobile, but then there are arcade games, ones I got from Apple Arcade that get their own uh, folder. It would be kind of nice if I could just have all of those into just one place. I don't need to differentiate between Apple Arcade and other games because in the end, they're all games. The other thing you'll notice here is that if I were to press any one of these particular icons, the bigger ones, it goes straight into the application. But if I want to actually see the rest of the applications underneath this category, you gotta hit the little folder thing here. So it's a little bit different the way that you navigate these quote unquote folders compared to folders that you created in your own home screens. You can already see some discrepancies here. It's kind of interesting. Uh, under productivity is Safari, yet under utilities is Chrome. I would actually take both of those and put it under browsing myself. I would say the app library has perhaps a 70 to 80% accuracy so far. There are only certain applications that are in the wrong place or not where I would put them. Uh, and that's perfectly fine. I actually applaud uh, the app library for trying as much as it does. But the thing that I would love to do is actually move some of these applications from one place to the other, but I just can't. I can move it away from the app library, but I can't move it to another category in the app library itself. And as you saw here, I actually moved the Gmail application away from the folder that I originally made which is down at the bottom. So it's kind of just pulling it from where it actually is in your home screens and then you gotta figure it out from there uh, if you make the mistake of trying to move things in the app library. 
By the way, I know you guys are horrified by this number right here. You know what? My work email is very tidy, but my other email accounts that I don't really look at for actual correspondence, those just pile in. So welcome to 51,000 emails. <laughs> Okay, so this main screen right here is already looking more customized than I remember iOS ever being. It's one of the main complaints that people levy when they talk about Android versus iOS, is that Android is incredibly customizable, uh, not just from the home screen standpoint, but even to just sort of a UI level. You can put a whole new launcher on there, you can really make it look uh, very personalized, and things like the photos, widget, and perhaps other ways of stacking your different widgets and whatnot can move towards that direction. So it's a good place that iOS is going. But these are still a problem, and that brings me to the final feature that I actually really liked, and that's edit pages. Imagine this. You have your main screen where you have things like the Photos app and maybe just some applications that you know you're going to use every single day. Uh, you can actually turn off the other pages so that they're not there anymore. This is closer to the Android uh, setup that I would typically have. One home screen with my main applications, that way I can enjoy maybe my background, my, my home screen background, or some other photo that I could hopefully customize in the Photos app so that the widget shows what I want. And there you go, I have one home screen with a photo that I like at the top, a couple of widgets for some information that I might need, and then I can actually take away a lot of these other icons, that way it looks really clean. Put all these applications in the dock here since it allows for folders, and if I need to find another application, I have two ways of doing it. Head over to the side to the app library where hopefully I'll be able to actually find which category that app is in, or just go to the recently added area, and if I just installed an application, it's obviously going to be there. And the second way for me to find an application is the one that I think most of you use, which is to say you can swipe down and you can put in whatever search term you want for the app that you're looking for. This is not a method that I use very often, but I can see why it's incredibly useful and why some people don't feel like they need an app drawer. But now we have something kind of like that, and it's good that there's at least this search bar right up here so you can easily make it to any application uh, alphabetically, or you can type it at the top just like you did uh, by swiping down on the main home screen like I showed a second ago. So these are ways of getting some of those features into iOS that actually feel like they have their own little flavor. Uh, I actually kind of enjoy this. I know the app library, I might have a couple of qualms with it because it might not categorize certain applications properly, but there are other ways of getting to the apps that you want. Probably my favorite part though is the fact that you can hide your applications by turning pages off. I can have the clean iOS home screen experience that I've been waiting for with a little bit of customization on top thanks to certain widgets like photos. All of that is actually a great step in the right direction. In any case, let me know what you think about iOS 14. Did you get the public beta 2 installed? Uh, let me know your thoughts on the new home screen features and whatnot. Get into the comment sections down below and have those conversations. At the very least, drop some likes on this video so I know you like what you see. And from there, you can subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. With all that said, I'm going to go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching. And until my next video, I would just remind you to enjoy your tea, everybody.